David, you've been negative for a long time on the market, on the economy. Is this how you expected it to play out? Uh, well, broadly speaking, uh, Sarah, the answer, you know, would be yes. And, you know, we have a, the Fed. I mean, really what's what's happened in the past 24 hours now that we've got the Bank of England behind us is, is the Fed has just been relentless in its hawkish rhetoric uh, into an inverted yield curve, uh, surging dollar contraction in the monetary base and, and the onset of recession. Uh, and so uh, that just has precipitated this uh, ongoing risk off trade. Uh, and uh, yeah. it's probably not going to end until until the Fed uh, and never mind pauses until the Fed embarks yeah. on the next easing cycle, which is probably at least a year away. But here's what's not playing out exactly as you forecast. The economy is not weakening that much. I know you, you think there's a recession and a lot of people at this point now are jumping on that bandwagon. But the data today I mean, did you see jobless claims well below consensus now at now in April low the, the tightness in the labor market, which I guess just gives fuel to the bears who say the Fed has the green light to, to go even more aggressively. Yeah, you know, well, well, firstly, Sarah, we, we, we did have back to back quarters of negative real GDP. And then it looks like we have basically roughly flat for the third quarter. Uh, that condition and remember that, you know, we can talk about GDI. That's income, but GDP is spending, uh, and that's been flat to negative this year. So it's debatable as to whether or not the economy is in recession. That much is true. Uh, but when the conference board's leading economic indicator, leading, not coincident, is down six months in a row, uh, and that database is back to 1959, the die is cast uh, for the recession. It's a matter as to whether it starts uh, in the fourth quarter or the first quarter next year. Your point on jobless claims, 100% true. It is a very interesting labor market uh, and the claims numbers just tell you about firings they tell you about pink slips and the firing rate is coming down because companies are hoarding labor because we've come through these past couple of years of acute worker shortages um, but when you look beneath the veneer what's also happening is that the hiring rate is coming down so jobless claims don't tell you about hirings they tell you about firings uh, but we know for example everybody loves to focus on the jolts data Everybody just focuses on job openings. But people don't talk about the fact that since February, new hires in the JOLT survey are negative 450,000. That's since February. So we're heading to a stage now where firing rates are low, but hiring rates are dropping and, and roughly matching now what firings are doing. So I think we're going to head into a situation, Sarah, where we're not going to get probably maybe contractions in employment, but employment is probably going to flatten or stagnate. And if the participation rate continues to go up like it has uh, this year, uh, even with a flat employment profile, the unemployment rate by this time next year is sitting above 6%. Uh, and that is going to be very much disinflationary as far as wage rates are concerned. So you think the Fed is making a big mistake, keeping up the hawkish rhetoric, continuing to hammer the markets with this higher rates, holding it high for a longer time? Well, at one point, uh, I thought the Fed was making a big mistake uh, until it became very apparent to me in the past couple of months, and especially post Jackson Hole, uh, that they actually are intent on generating the conditions for a recession. Uh, so it's not a mistake. Uh, I think this is deliberate. You have Jay Powell is comparing himself to Paul Volcker, and Paul Volcker deliberately created the conditions for back to back recessions to crush supply side inflation. And all you ever hear from Jay Powell is comparisons, not to Arthur Burns, not to McChesney Martin, not to Bernanke or Greenspan or anybody else except Paul Volcker. So I don't know if it's a mistake. I think this is exactly what they want to see happen. They want to see asset markets crack. That's happening. Uh, and that's part and parcel of weakening the economy sufficiently to get to their 2% holy grail inflation. So it might not be a mistake. This could be exactly what it is that they want. 